Okay, in this video, we're going to talk about something called surface area. And we're going to talk about surface area specifically in terms of cubes, cylinders, and pyramids. Okay? I think I spelled pyramids wrong there. Sorry about that. So let's talk about what surface area is. Now, you know a basic formula for a square that's flat, don't you? You know that the area of a square is just basically length times width, right? And it doesn't really make any difference which one is length times width, or it's just side squared. Okay. Quantity squared. Now, if it's a perfect square, we know that the length and the width are the same, which is why we would say side. And we just multiply those and you'd get the square. But if you have like a rectangle, right, then the length times the width makes a little bit more sense, right, because they would be two different um, calculations. But nevertheless, you would multiply them two and you would get something that is squared. An area is something that is squared. Now, a cube, there's two different types of cubes in this sense. One that's based off of this model and one that's based off of this one. So let's say that we have a perfect cube where all the sides of this cube were exactly the same face. And this dotted line indicates that it's behind the figure and it goes backwards. So to figure out the surface area of a cube, basically you would use the simpler formula, which is the side squared, right? But you would multiply it by the number of faces, let me write that down, faces, that are in this particular cube, right? So if you were to, like, take this cube apart, it would basically look something like this, okay? There'd be a square there, a square there, a square there, one here, one here, and one here you would fold it up, fold these sides up, and then you would get this figure. So you can legitimately say that the surface area of a perfect cube is six times side squared. Just find the area of one of them and then multiply them by six. So here's this would be the formula for a perfect cube. Now for a more rectangular cubic type figure, right? Let's take a quick look what that might look like drawn out. Okay, it would look something like that. And again, those sides. Now again, if you were to take this apart, uh, you could have a couple variations. You know that this particular face for example, again, this is the side that faces you is called a face. This is called an edge, okay, where the two meet, and this is called a, uh, a vertex, all right? But if I were to take this particular one apart, you would see that there are one, two, three, four faces that are the rectangles, right? And on either end, you would have two of a different shape. All right, so you just find the area of one, multiply it by four, find the area of one of the sides, multiply it by two. Or you could also have something where it might look something like this. Long and skinny on one face, much longer on the other faces, and then this is also another different shape, right? In which case, again, remember difficult problems are simple ones broken apart. This would be two of the top and bottom face, two of the side face, and then two of these opposite faces here. So you have to be pretty vigilant and then just add all those up and you would get the surface area. So be pretty vigilant in counting what kind of a shape you do have, okay? So that is how you find the surface area of a cubic type shape. Now let's talk about cylinders. These ones are kind of interesting. <clears throat> now a cylinder basically looks something like this. It's circular on either end and then it's connected, okay? 
something like that. Now, remember again, difficult problems are just simple problems stacked together. So if you were to take this cylinder and break it apart into its component shapes, it would look something like this. You would have two opposite circles, right? One for the top, one for the bottom. And then pretend you like cut this cylindrical shape right down the middle and then unrolled it. If you unrolled it, you would basically get some kind of a rectangle, okay? You would have two top and bottom and then one unrolled body, okay? So again, how would you find the area of a cylinder, surface area of a cylinder? You would multiply, you'd find the area of a circle, which is two, which, excuse me, which is pi r squared. Again, find the radius there, right? And then just multiply by pi r squared, pi r squared. And then find the area of this particular rectangle, which again is the cylindrical body, okay? And we know what we do that, it's just length times width, okay? Add all three of those components together and you would find the area of a cylinder. Now lastly, let's look at a pyramid or a pyramidal shape. You actually have two kinds of pyramids. Let me show you the one that we mostly think of. Okay. Now this is the type of pyramid that you would find, like for example, in Egypt. And to find the area of a pyramidal shape, you have to break this apart. You'll notice that one, two, three, four of the faces are pyramids themselves, right? But the very, very bottom is a square. The base of the pyramid is a square. So to find the area of a triangle, right, um, it's one half length times width, right, or altitude times, but you know how to, you know how to find that. And then just to find this square or this base depends on, again, the shape that you're using, right? But I didn't want to talk about this one too much. I wanted to talk more about this one, which is a little bit more uncommon. There we go. This is a type of pyramidal shape where there are one, two, three, and then the bottom four. You have four pyramidal shapes, right? And again, remember the formula to find an area of a triangle. Um, well, of a right triangle, right, is one half base times height, right? Um, and for a an equilateral triangle, remember where they're all three sides are the same. You basically cut that up, find these two. Oh, excuse me, there we go. Find these two, right? Just find the area of one half base times the height, right? And then multiply it by two because you have two of them for an equilateral triangle. Okay, I hope that was helpful in terms of how you take these basic shapes and to analyze them into their component parts. Remember, difficult problems are really just simple ones stacked together, and you just have to be observant in how they are stacked together. Okay, I hope that was helpful.